So let's take a look at this mind map that I have created for us to walk you through exactly what day in the life of an engineering manager looks like. You don't necessarily need to do all of these things in a day, but these are some things that you need to do and are expected to do in your role as an engineering manager. So you can think of this mind map as a checklist of things that you should be doing. So if you're doing them, great. If you're not, and if you're curious about what it takes to become an engineering manager, then this is a great place for you. So let's take a look. If you take a look at this mind map, there are several parts to this mind map and I don't want you to be scared because I have basically listed down all the things that most engineering managers are expected to do. Now keep this in mind that every org and team are quite different. So you might be expected to do more things or less things if they already have a role for that, if they, they already have a position for it. So because engineering management and project, project management and a lot of it, it has a ton of overlap. If there are roles for that, you might not necessarily have to do those things. But if not, then you might ha have to. So I'm going to cover a pretty robust roadmap, but keep this in mind so that you don't get scared that you might have to do everything in this. This specific engineering manager roadmap is divided into a few different pillars. One is organization, team, people, hiring, product, technical, communication and personal growth. So let's take a look at each one by one. If you like a copy of this mind map, you can download it for free. Take a look at the description below if you like, and you can have a copy of your own. So the first thing that we are going to take a look at is organization. I would like you to have a top down view of your org so that you are able to know exactly how your role as an engineering manager plays in the wider org and how goals are set, how you create objectives for your teams and so on. I have some good news. I have been working on a course to take you from a developer to a engineering manager and make you a very successful engineering manager. So if you are interested, add yourself to the waitlist. This course will cover everything that we have talked about in this specific engineering manager series, but there's a lot more that I couldn't cover in this series that I will cover in the course. So please feel free to check it out and take a look in the description below. Let's try to zoom in on the org. So there are a few things you need to keep in mind as we discuss about the org structure. So the first is you need to have a really solid understanding of the vision of your org and what the yearly vision looks like. So every year, maybe towards the end of the year for the upcoming year, the founders or the senior leaders meet and they discuss what the vision for the org should look like in the next year or the next five years and so on. And accordingly, they decide they want to reach to X milestone or X goals and X number. And that's how they decide, okay, the yearly vision of this specific year or the upcoming year is going to look whatever. Now you need to understand that vision very clearly because then you are going to make decisions for your team based on that and you will understand how your team plays a role in that vision if you create goals for your teams against those goals then i kind of think of your team as a tiny boat which is steering away which is going to slowly turn the ship away because all these tiny teams or all these tiny boats for the ship are not heading in the right direction so your ship is going to slowly start turning away and that's not what we want. So have a good understanding of the org. After you understand what the vision of your org looks like, try to understand the business vision and the technical vision as well. So based on the business vision, the, the VP, the CTO or whoever that might be, uh, your senior leaders, senior technical leaders are also going to create a vision for your org. So for example, we should move away from REST APIs and only use GraphQL, or we should make sure that all our experiences are fully accessible and accessibility is a priority for every user experience that we create, which it should be. So whatever that might be, we are going to, you need to know that vision so that you have a better understanding for your team. So for example, if accessibility is part of it, then you need to make sure that when you are creating your roadmap for your team, accessibility is added as the criteria because that's also part of the vision. The next thing is planning. Now, based on that vision and the goals of your business, you need to understand which goals apply to you because there might be goals for the entire company. Based on those goals, then you need to start planning and planning your yearly roadmap and then your quarterly roadmap as well. So based on that, you're going to assess, we wanna achieve X percent in, in a year, this is our goal. 
and then based on that for every quarter we are going to try to meet x number right or we are going to try to hit 10 million dollars or whatever that might be although how many dollars does it associate to is not necessarily in your control you are also partnering with product and design and all the other departments as well marketing and so on but you need to assess what the quarterly goals look like and then accordingly set ambitious goals now one framework that you can use to divide those big goals into smaller goals is OKRs. OKRs stand for Objective Key Results. And this is a framework where you can assess how you can set a ambitious objective, associate that to a key result you wanna associate yourself with. Um, so I won't go too deep into what OKRs are, but this should give you a good understanding that it's a framework that is quite commonly used while planning for the year and for, while planning the roadmap. The next thing is, collaboration with HR partner. So for your org, whenever you have to, you also need to understand the decisions that the org needs to make. There's gonna be an HR. In every HR department, you are going to have a partner that you collaborate with. And that partner is going to help you communicate exactly what you, what they need you to communicate to their team. So make sure that you have a really strong relationship with the HR partner. And if there is any downturn communication or if there is any important org communication, or anything like that, you will be able to know exactly the words to use to communicate that to your teams so that you make sure that your team is in the best spot possible and they have all the information necessary as well. So again, in organization, these are a few things you need to keep in mind. The next thing we are going to take a look at is team. Now, team is very important for you as an engineering manager. There are quite a few things you need to do for your team just to make sure that your team is in the right spot and you have full control as a leader. Now, make sure that you have good processes and there is good documentation of processes. You're iterating on those processes as well. Again, too much process is not good. Have a right balance for process. And task management, such as who gets to do, who gets to work on what. You need to strike a really good balance here because you don't want to assign tasks to folks that are not necessarily interested in those tasks. So make sure you have a good understanding of the people working on that task and, and also they are motivated to work on those tasks as well and give them full autonomy as well. So for example, some people do crave for autonomy. So for example, if they do love autonomy, then assign them a task, talk to them about a high level goals and let them have full control in terms of how they want to execute it. And you can be the sounding partner for them and understand how they plan to implement it and so on. But based on what the interests are, what their strengths and weaknesses are, accordingly assign tasks as well. Then you need to also measure your team performance. So for team performance, anything you want to measure, it needs to be tracked so that you are able to measure. So assign proper metrics and track them, conduct weekly retrospectives. Retrospectives are a way to reflect on how the week went, what went well, what didn't go so well, and so on. But this is how you can measure the team performance. For example, if your team's weekly output is a certain number of tasks, then make sure that you are able to maintain that momentum. If you are not, then your project planning might not go as planned. So make sure that you have a good understanding of all of that. The next thing is project management. Now, this is something that that you need to understand that there might be another role altogether in every company. Now, every company is so different. So if you don't have this, then you might have to do it on your own or you have to gather around the developers and assign these roles and take turns doing them. So for project management, you need to plan the milestones. So for example, what are some tasks and milestones you need to hit along the way? Because the project can be maybe four to six months long or one to two months long, but what are the mini milestones that you can hit on the way just to showcase to your stakeholders and to your team and product managers and everyone that you are heading in the right path. Then you need to monitor that performance. You need to make sure that you have good productivity practices. So if you do know that there are certain things that are maybe creating a lot more toil for your team, then maybe invest some time into automating that just because you don't want your team to be wasting time on things that where they can be productive. So make sure that you do invest time there. Then is prioritization, grooming, planning. So plan your tickets properly, plan your tasks properly, make sure that the backlog 
backlog of tickets is properly groomed and make sure that you understand how to what the priorities are based on the roadmap that you have planned as well but again if the tick tasks have proper detail then the developers would be able to work on them as well but obviously gather around the developers and make sure you work on all of these then is continuous improvement any of this will keep changing every month now this is just a good list to have but you need to make sure that you keep, keep improving you keep iterating with your team now for every team different things are going to work not everything is going to work for every single team so make sure you cater to that so one team can differ from the other and so on a very important pillar of engineering management are the people so this is something you need to handle in a very delicate way because your decisions have a huge impact on your team and people are going to be impacted. So make sure that you know exactly what you're doing. Always create a plan for it. Make sure that your the decision makers with you are also on the same page when you do take a look at anything to deal with people. So because you really want to make sure you get this right. So in people, you have to hire and onboard the people that you work with. Now, if you have a team of maybe two developers, if you want to make a team, if you want to create a team of seven developers and five to seven is usually the max for a team size uh, or a healthy max for a team size for one engineering manager. And in that case, you need to make sure that you're hiring the right people and onboarding them as well. And hiring and onboarding is a separate pillar for this reason, because there's lots to talk about it. So we will take a look at it very soon. Next is the happiness of the people. It's very important that you foster a culture of transparency, you create a psychological safety for them. And I, I do have a blog post written on this topic. If you're interested, take a look in the description. But make sure that these things do align with the team culture and the people are happier in general because this will add to the culture of your team. If people are happier, people are excited to wake up in the morning and come work for you, then you are going to be more successful as a, as a happy outcome. People are going to be more productive because of that because they are interested in making the company better. So make sure that the happiness is really accounted for. The next thing is feedback. The way you gather feedback and, uh, give the, and the way you give constructive feedback is extremely important. Now, feedback is so important that you really need to make sure that you build really good frameworks and patterns for people because different people accept feedback differently. Different people have required different people ask for feedback in a very different way. So make sure that you gather feedback about them in a proper way and you also give them constructive feedback as well. Then is career growth. Now, career growth is extremely important in a developer's life. The developers reporting into you really are interested to know where they stand, what can they do to, to get to the next level, and they, there should be full transparency related to this. So first, are there any career ladders set up in the company? And career ladders could be things like if they are an intermediate developer, then maybe they want to get to senior developer or staff developer, principal developer and so on. Now, depending on the level you are at, there could be different levels in every company. So the career ladder can be completely different in every company. Now, if they want to take the individual contributor path, then they can. Or if they want to take maybe a staff technical leader route, then they can do that as well. Now, again, depending on the team that you work on, or a staff or a technical lead can be considered a leadership position or it could be considered an IC position and engineering manager onwards is considered a management position or a leadership position. So again, career ladders differ from company to company, but make sure that you know what path they want to go on so that you can give them opportunities accordingly. Make sure that every developer is creating SMART goals. SMART is a framework used to create goals and I will link what SMART means in the description below but they allow you to create really smart goals. Then make sure that they do have a development plan or a growth plan. Again, different companies call it different things, but a growth plan allows you to document where they are at in their journey, how their goals can tie to the objectives that they're working on, and those objectives align to the company's vision. And this is why I kind of gave you an idea of the org vision, the roadmap, yearly vision, and then these goals should map to that. So all the developers are working to make the company better. Then is the brag document. A brag document is a document where you document 
exactly all the cool things that you have done and things that you are proud of. So make sure every developer in your team has a specific brag doc that they are proud of. And make sure there are also promotions planned out and mapped out as well. So if they are already doing a good job and meeting expectations or even exceeding ex ex expectations in a specific level, don't wait for them to ask you to promote them. When you think they are ready, start creating a plan with them just to make sure that their career growth is on track. So again, all of these things are very important. Then is performance reviews. The performance reviews are extremely important. Now, one thing you want to really avoid, a one mistake that you really want to avoid is wait until the very last minute to give a performance review to the person or to give a feedback to the specific developer. Anything that comes out of performance reviews, none of it should come as a surprise to the developer. If they're surprised, you have not done a good job as an engineering manager. So make sure that your performance reviews are really on point and you already have a document which is your growth plan that ties it all together.